Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Enigma machine. Now as we're talking about it today in class, or if you're re-watching this later on to try to figure out how to use it at home, um, basically the first thing that you need to do is go ahead and assemble it. When you're done, your Enigma machine will look like this. Now notice that we have a cylinder, which is just made of paper, and notice that I've cut it very carefully and cut it, or and taped it together very carefully, otherwise your Enigma machine will not work. It just, it doesn't line up properly and so it ends up doing really weird things. Now, the other thing that you're going to have are these rotors. Now notice that they slide freely, but they also are a bit stiff on here, so that way they don't go sliding very easily. Once you've started coding or decoding, you want to make sure that these don't move because otherwise it'll totally mess up your code. Now one of the cool things about the Enigma machine is because it has these three rotors and this cylinder which has letters on both sides, it made it very, very difficult to decrypt what was going on in these messages. Um, one of the cool things too is that you decode from right to left, then left to right. So basically you couldn't get much more encoded than the encoded than this, and that's part of the reason that these were so difficult to break during World War II. So let me go ahead and show you how you can actually use the Enigma machine to code and decode a message. Now let's start off with this. You'll notice that I have one, two, and three already laid out. Now if I were leaving a message for you or you were sending a message to me, we'd want to make sure that we establish this so this way we know which three rotors are being used. Now during World War II, they would have had more rotors at their disposal, however we just have three to keep things easy. Now notice they're in the order one, two, three, and on here I have them in the order one, two, three. This way they're the same from left to right, the direction that we read in. Now the next thing that we need to do is decide what three letters we are coding to. I'll explain exactly how that works in a second. But for this example, let's use the letters B, R, B. Now with these three letters, anybody who's using an Enigma machine would know how to line up the rotors on their Enigma machine. So the first thing you need to do is find the letter A at the very top of your Enigma machine. Now you'll notice this is also where you've taped it together to make the cylinder work. So on the cylinder, find A and A. And you probably can't see it very well just because this is so close and so tiny, but A and A are both right here. The next thing I need to do is adjust my rotors so that B, R, and B show up on rotors 1, 2, and 3. So my first rotor, 1, is already set to B. So B is on the same line as this A. So see how you have this line? They need to follow each other perfectly. The next one I'm going to twist until it reaches R. And that one needs to be on the same line as A as well. That way it lines up perfectly. The last one I'm going to twist all the way to B right here. So that way the B lines up with everything. Now it wouldn't be much of a code if you were very predictable in this case. So what the Germans actually would do is make this code even harder. Instead of this third rotor, the last one, the one that's closest to this side, remaining the letter that it is, you actually move down the alphabet one letter. So BRB becomes BRC. So that way, if anyone finds your code, even if they kind of can figure it out, if they got this one wrong, they are out. So instead of having BRB, I'm going to go ahead and turn this rotor one more time so it's BRC. So this one's now set to C being on the same level as A. Now the next thing that I need to do is choose a letter. After all, we gotta choose something to get going here. So let's choose the letter H. So I have the letter H. So the first thing that I need to do is figure out how to encode the letter H. And the beautiful thing is encoding and decoding is actually very similar. So if you follow one pattern, it works pretty easy the other way, but we'll go through it both ways just to make sure you're on the same page with me. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is find H on the right side of the, of the rotor, 
or I'm sorry, of the cylinder. So, very right side of the cylinder, here's my letter H, and then I'm going to look at what letter is right next to it. In this case, it's the letter T. So, since it's T on this side, I'm going to turn my Enigma machine this way until I find T on the left side of rotor 3. Now notice that the left sides are alphabetical on the rotors, the right sides are not alphabetical, they're in a random order. This is part of what makes the Enigma machine work so beautifully. So, my H up here on this side became a T. Next thing I need to do is look along here and find the letter that's next to it on the next rotor. In this case, it's the letter X. So T becomes X. Now X, I'm going to turn, turn, turn until I reach the letter X right here on the left side of the middle rotor. So X is right here, T beco or H becomes T, T becomes X, and now X becomes Q because Q is the letter right beside it. I'm now going to turn again until I find Q right here. So I've got my Q, and now I'm going to find the letter that's right next to it. In this case, it's I. Now, because we're working on this side, we're going to start turning the, road, or the, the cylinder this way instead of this way. It doesn't make the biggest difference, but it does make it a little bit easier to follow the lines. So I'm going to follow up to here, and here's my I, right here. Now I is going to become J. Notice that they're together, same line. Now this part gets a little bit more tricky because it's harder to find the letters on this side since they're not in alphabetical order. However, we can still find them. So J, I'm going to kind of follow this line down here. J is right here and becomes P right here. You can follow the P's line until it's here. P becomes F. F is really easy because it's right here. F becomes A. So if I'm encrypting a message, H becomes A. There we go. Now, if I'm decrypting a message, the cool thing is that the Enigma machine works exactly the way that I just showed you. So let's find the letter A. A becomes F find F down here, F becomes P, find P right here, P becomes J, this way to find J, J becomes I, now we're going to turn the other way, I becomes Q, Q right here becomes X, X, is hiding. It's way over here. X becomes T. T is right. Oh, I think I passed it. That's okay. You can always keep going around. T becomes H. They're on the same line. So that's how we know it's working properly. So remember, every time you're doing it, you go from right, 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 right to left, 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 left. And that will give you the exact answer. Now the cool thing, you could change the rotors, put them in a different order. You can change the letters. And no matter what, as long as you put the numbers and these letters and then your message, anybody can encode or decode your message. So there you go. That is how the Enigma machine works. If you have any questions, just let us know.